The Ashapu, Cumbi, and South Edisto basins represent one of the largest undeveloped estuaries on the east coast of the United States. It consists of approximately 350,000 acres of diverse habitats, including pine and hardwood uplands, forested wetlands, fresh brackish and saltwater tidal marshes, barrier islands, and beaches. It's mid-June and lots of birds at the peak of their reproduction. That's why we don't see more herons out here. Birding, interestingly, is now nationally second only to fishing as a pastime. And that statistic is how would, for individuals that would drive a mile or more to watch birds, that's the basis for being included in this survey. And it's second only to fishing as a national pastime. So that gives you some idea of the potential revenue. And keep in mind that the revenue is not only local, people staying in a local motel, eating at local restaurants, but when they buy optical equipment, when they buy bird books, that, that economic impact spreads out. It has a much greater geographical range, so to speak. So in protecting natural areas, that's what we mean about the investment in the future. And it's a renewable investment because each and every year these people come back to enjoy these natural areas. A major goal of the protection efforts is to ensure that traditional uses such as farming, forestry, recreational and commercial fishing and hunting will continue in the area. In birds, the bird species that we call area sensitive, they require large parcels of land to be successful in their nesting. And if you don't have that parcel, that size, they don't occur. The other biological reason for going large is landscape ecology. And that's the science where things that operate outside of your area of interest influence your area of interest. And small parcels are easily affected by what's going on around them. But the larger the parcel that's protected, the less that effect occurs. So there are two solid biological reasons right there why South Carolina had to move from protecting someone's backyard because it had a rare flower to hundreds of acres, thousands of acres, because it contains lots of different elements that need to be protected. By protecting areas like this, you preserve history as well. Things like these rice gates that made some of the wealthiest people in the world that lived here in our state. You're absolutely right. And, uh, and that's why heritage preserves not only protect natural areas, but also cultural areas. And what we have in these trunks, rice trunks, are cultural areas. And the two go together. And in the future, that protection is going to pay off a hundredfold, a thousandfold, as ecotourism and tourists in general come to take advantage of what we're doing in our protection efforts. And we think about the investment in the future also with the young people when they're exposed to places like this. That's one of my greatest concerns right now. If we're not engaging the younger generation in our conservation and protection ethics, we might lose all of this investment we made in protection. So it's critical to get these students out of the classroom and into preserves like the Ace Basin Preserve, into a place like Bear Island Wildlife Management Area, so they can start to develop the environmental ethics that's responsible for this protection right now. Uh, it's a great concern because if we don't, we stand a chance of losing it all. <laughs>